Hello again, and it was a nice, bright, sunny afternoon today. Hopefully everybody got a chance to get outside a little bit. And if you're joining us later on watching the recording, I just want to quickly go through some of the things we will be using today. So on my list, there should be a supply list too. The one thing I forgot was toothpicks. If you have a toothpick, they are come in really handy for doing this. Um, so to start at the top, I have a piece of uh, cardboard that's off of a box of noodles or something. A cereal box will work. We're going to use a shape that's about five inches by seven inches. It doesn't have to be exact, but well, that's a good size. We're going to use a glue stick. Uh, you could probably use regular glue, but the glue stick will be good because it doesn't uh, make your paper wrinkle. We will be using regular school glue. It doesn't matter if it's clear glue or white glue, either way, that'll be fine. And we're actually going to use the, um, the glue bottle as a guide for a size for something. So if you have an actual glue bottle, those are great. Uh, we'll need a scissors. You will probably need some googly eyes and maybe some diamonds or gemstones that you had in your little kit. And I've got a dark, piece of construction paper you could use black or you could use dark blue that'll kind of be our background for our picture today and of course we're going to use lots of yarn and I probably have a few different colors than you have in your kit but if you have any other colors at home or if you have a friend who has some has does some crocheting or something uh, you can use whatever colors you would like and we're going to do some painting with the yarn as our paint. So you might want to kind of untangle your bundle a little bit so you can pull your pieces out, pull them apart as you need to, lay them across your lap or across the table somewhere where you can get at them easily. And now we'll get started here. I'm just going to try to untangle mine a little bit as, as well. And on my tabletop here, you can see um, my first attempt at doing this project. And you can probably see a little bit of a Rudolph in there. He's kind of the, um, the star of the show in, in this one. So it's uh, not a great way to do fine details. So it's kind of a just um, have a little bit of fun with some big splashes of color. Um, the other thing I was going to say is if you have a marker, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take and color one end of my toothpick because what I found was happening last time I did this was that I was getting my, the end of my toothpick was getting glue on it. And then I would set it down somewhere. And then when I went to pick it up, I'd pick up the wrong end and I'd get my finger all sticky with glue. You probably will also want to make sure that you're working on a surface that it doesn't matter if you spill a little bit of glue, it might get a little sticky or have a napkin nearby that you could set your, uh, your glue covered toothpick on. I have a little tiny plate, so I'm going to use that to keep the rest of my area clean. You, it, if you're a messy worker, it might be a good idea to put down some newspaper or a really big piece of paper that'll kind of cover up your area and be easy to clean up later. So, okay, so here's the picture. Uh, this is just an idea and you're going to be have plenty of time to be really creative here. Um, so, if you don't have a toothpick, you could probably use a pencil and that might actually be better because then you would know which end to pick up. Um, it doesn't matter if it's sharp or not, um, that would work as well, or a pen, but I don't think you'd wanna get a whole lot of glue on a pen, the end of a pen, it probably wouldn't work after that. So anyway, that is the Rudolph. And to start, I'm gonna show you first of all, how I got my paper ready to work. And I'm gonna take my, cardboard that I have. And this one is what I'm going to use the glue stick for because glue sticks, when you, when you put the paper on it, they don't wrinkle the paper when it dries. So I'm going to put quite a bit of this, the glue stick on the back of my cardboard. And the cardboard really is just kind of like a backing for your picture to help hold it up because it's going to get kind of heavy with all this yarn on it. And just give it a little bit of 
a little bit of structure to help hold it all together. And then I'm going to, I'm going to put quite a bit of glue on and make sure the whole thing is covered because I want this construction paper to stick really well and, and kind of also be flat and smooth. So since the construction paper is the same color on both sides, that doesn't really matter what side you use, but I'm just going to take my cardboard and lay it down on the construction paper. If you put it really close to the edge, then you don't have as much to trim off. And I'm going to rub really hard on that and make sure that we've got a really good seal all the way around it so that the we don't lose the cardboard part of it. it doesn't start coming up. Then I'm just gonna trim around the edges of it. I suppose if you wanted to put this in a frame or something later, you might want to cut your cardboard to be the same size as your frame. Uh, that would be, be a good idea. I didn't really think about a way to hang it up. So maybe when you're done, you have to poke a hole through it with a knife or, or with a, maybe with a, with a, what am I trying to say, a nail and give yourself a little place to hang a string or something on it. Okay, clean up some of my scraps as I go there so I have plenty of room to work here. And then I'm just gonna make sure that I got a good, I don't have any wrinkles in that. Probably won't be able to see the wrinkles anyway, but I, I like to have a nice smooth surface. Okay, then the next step will be if you have the bundle of yarn from the MCA kit, uh, you should have a piece of kind of shiny, it's not really sparkly, but it has a little bit of shine to it, kind of a brown uh, yarn. This is the one I chose to use for my Rudolph, just because it kind of was the closest to the color of a real uh, deer. And uh, you could, since we have a dark background, you could probably do it with a light brown or something too, and then it would contrast a little bit more. But what I'm going to do is take that brown piece of yarn and I'm going to fold it in half. It doesn't have to be exact. This is what I'm going to use what my glue bottle for. I'm going to take my glue bottle and put the middle of the yarn around it and just tie it in a bow, kind of like you're tying your shoes. So crisscross it through once, doesn't even have to be tight. We're just gonna get the basic shape with tying, tie it like you tie a shoe. And then you can adjust the size, maybe make your, the, the loops of your shoelace here are gonna be Rudolph's ears. And the part that went around his around the glue stick or around the glue bottle is actually his nose, his whole head. And then the leftover long parts are kind of his antlers. So that's, um, that's about, let's see, what size? His ears I have are kind of about the size of the end of my thumb. I just could stick my thumb right in there. And obviously the head is the the same size as my glue bottle. Then I'm just gonna slip it off and I'll lay it down on our paper here to get kind of an idea of how we want it. And there is our first part of our Rudolph. How are you doing? Is that working for you? Good, thanks. Okay, what we're gonna do when we get going here is probably make believe shapes to the antlers. They'll be kind of, I don't I like to have a little bit of loop, loop to dupes in them. And then we're gonna hang some of the, the gemstones that we got in the kit. Uh, let's see if I have, what colors do I have left? Oh, I have a purple heart, and kind of a gold, Diamond shape of a clear one, that'll show up nice. Another purple. Ooh, a darker purple heart. Got some hearts there. And a pink heart. 
I might just use all of those on there today. So we don't need those right away, but I thought I'd get them out and see what I had left. Okay, so I'm just gonna slide those gemstones off so we have those for later. And we'll go back to Rudolph here. So there's a couple of ways you could do Rudolph. Um, the first way I think works pretty well um, is to write with something you can, if you're writing on black construction paper, you should even be able to see just brief, uh, just faintly the lines of a pencil. So what I did was just, well, actually I could just draw with the, no, I don't want exactly that shape. This is a little bit rounder. So I'm gonna leave his head kind of round, kind of teared up shape. And I'm just gonna draw inside of it about in the middle of my paper, just so I can kind of see where I want to put the glue. That's pretty close. I can fit about four fingers on either side of it. And I know you can't see that very well on the camera, but I will, you should be able to see the glue once I get started with that. So this is where your toothpick is going to come in handy, is after you put some glue on your paper, and we're going to cover pretty much this whole piece of paper with yarn so it doesn't you don't even have to be super neat about your glue but that's about where i want rudolph's head so what i'm gonna do is pick up my yarn and kind of start setting the yarn in the glue and you can push it down with your fingers a little bit and i see i didn't quite get my glue far enough out to the side here just put more glue on because we're going to use lots of it today. Good thing glue is inexpensive. And then what I found is that if I get a nice bead of glue on there and I take my toothpick and kind of tap the yarn down into the glue, you'll almost be able to see the glue or the yarn getting wet. And the nice thing about this project is doesn't stick and we're not going to wait for it to dry so you can move it around a little bit as you go and kind of adjust things but I do like to kind of push it down enough that I can kind of see the yarn soaking up some of the glue and I suppose I should have done his ears done the glue for his ears right away but I'm just going to peel that back and kind of guess where the ear was and this is why I'm holding on to the black end of my toothpick. And you'll probably notice that the tail end of your yarn makes your bow here not lay perfectly flat on the paper. And that's totally fine too. You'll be able to kind of squish and move things as you want. And even probably even for the whole hour or so that you're working on this, you'll still be able to move the yarn around on the page some because it does take quite a while for the, all this, quite a bit of glue for all that glue to dry. So when I started this the first time, I thought I would just press these onto the paper with my fingers. My finger got pretty sticky pretty fast and I fig figured out that this toothpick thing works pretty well. All right, now we're going to make some fancy dancy, crazy looking antlers for Rudolph. And you can draw them however you want because they're just make believe. I'm going to do a great big loop de doop and then back out on the other side. And I found that if I hold the end of the yarn up a little bit and then just go as I go just press it into the glue a little bit and then I can kind of hold it straighten out my yarn a little bit go back and it's kind of fun you can just move it around wherever you want Then I'm going to pat that in. And the other thing I'm going to do is trim off the end. It doesn't have to be right next to the super even with the edge of the paper because we can fix it later. 
but I don't want to accidentally grab the tail end of that and pull it all off. Go back and kind of check some of your other spots. And I suppose if we were hunters, we would care if Rudolph had antlers that were the same on both sides, but I don't care if they're the same on both sides. So I'm going to do a little different swirl there. Because we're artists, we can be creative. Turn my paper a little bit so that my end of my yarn doesn't drag through that glue. And then kind of do the same thing. Sometimes you'll have to find that you need to twist your yarn one way or the other to make it lay down a little bit better. We get that out towards the end and trim off the excess. The other thing I was thinking that might work for trimming it was would be a um, fingernail clippers instead of the scissors because sometimes it's hard to hold the yarn still with enough pressure on it to get the scissors to cut. So never fear if it doesn't uh, cut where you want it, you can trim it later. And even if you pull your antlers or pull your yarn a little bit in the wrong way, you can still go back and straighten it and put it where you want it. Okay. Awesome. You got Rudolph on there. He looks like he's got a uh, antelope antlers uh, so now we can just kind of play and do whatever order we want on this and I think I'm going to do a few different things from what I did last time I might put another row of brown inside of his face so you can see a little bit more of the brown color I found on my original one that I put so many different colors in there that it got hard to see Rudolph. And since he is kind of the subject of my painting, I'm going to put a little bit more Rudolph in there. Oops. You could do the same thing in the center of his ears. Or I even thought about putting a light, lighter brown maybe inside of his ears. So he had kind of two-tone. Sometimes animals that have brown, that are brown, have a lighter color hair inside their ears. Then you can just trim that to about the right length and adjust everything. Okay. I'm also going to since I'm using the clear school glue and it dries kind of shiny, I'm going to actually put a coating on it, the whole background of his face, so that the paper is shiny there. Because I'm not going to fill his face completely in. Although you could go back and do that. Um, so I chose probably some of the larger uh, wiggly eyes to put on this face. You could do whichever size you want. I just wanted it to be really obvious what those eyes are. And my only problem I had with the googly eyes and the gemstones was getting the adhesive backing off of it. So if you have good fingernails, I guess it's probably easier to peel that little piece off and you have the sticky. Um, I kind of wish I had a pair of tweezers or something that I could set that down in there but you can press just a little bit you could probably move it around just a little bit even after you set it on there then double check that all your yarn is back in the glue that you didn't have just accidentally move something all right, so I always have a little hard time getting the paper started. And the eyes are small, so they're hard to hang on to. There we go. And let's try to get his two eyes kind of even on the top of his head, not 
Yeah, that's pretty straight. Sometimes wherever it drops is where it's going to go. All right. What is the most well-known part of Rudolph? And I think everybody would say that is his nose. So I'm going with the brightest red yarn I have for his nose. And you probably want to cut a piece. Oh, maybe as long as your longest finger. Don't want too long of a piece here to work with or it's going to be hard to play with. So we'll put quite a bit of good, good amount of glue there right where his nose would go. And you can, you can do this one way or the opposite. It's one of those things you could do it either way. I think it might be easier to start with a large circle and then fill in the middle. So I had a really hard time before keeping the circle small when I was starting. So you might have to use your toothpick to kind of twirl it around and get that circle the size you want it. I did it backwards the other way. Other time I started in the middle, it was really hard to keep it tight in that curve. And then here's where a tweezers or a fingernail clippers might work really nice. Is once you get it on there and you decide what size you want, you have to cut off the extra. And then getting it to stick in there and fill in that space is a little tricky just keep working with it and sometimes you can put a little more glue on the top this way sorry about the shadow there and that then you can kind of get the end wet with the glue and when you stick it down in there it might help it stay So I did find out that there's actually a tribe in down in Mexico somewhere that does uh, yarn painting like this. And they do a lot of really bright colors and geometric designs on things. I can't remember what the what they put it on. If they put it on fabric. Oh, I think maybe they put it on wood. I should have looked that back up again so I could give you the name of that um, tribe. But if you want to find out more about the tribe in or the culture in Mexico that uses this yarn painting technique, you can just search yarn painting. And I suppose if you wanted, you could put Mexico on, on Google or any search engine. And I'm sure you'll get lots of options to look at that and see some of the beautiful work that they do. So now is a good time to go back and kind of double check that all your yarn is staying in the spot that you want it to be. If you need to uh, trim anything, you can do that. And sometimes there's little spots where it's not quite staying down close to the paper, like where that knot is. And now would be a good time to just go back and kind of double check that it's all touching the glue and stain in place. Okay, my next choice is to do, because of course Rudolph is at the North Pole, would be to do a pine tree, which is probably not actually pine trees at the North Pole, but that's, we always think of uh, pine trees. And so I'm gonna do a green. Um, I think there's kind of a dark bluish green in the kit. There's, I have kind of a sparkly green here, but I also have a big fat green. So it might be kind of nice to do different textures of yarn. And I am going to put my tree over on this side. 
I'm just going to start out. I'm not going to put all the glue on, but I'm going to start out with the bottom of it. About like that. And all you have to do for the tree is just go back and forth. And your each row is just going to be a little bit shorter than the row before it. So getting it to bend and come back in place or right next to it would be easiest if you put your toothpick or something down right at where you want it to bend. And then carefully pull it out. And there's your first bend. Get that down, stuck down pretty well. I'm starting pretty close to the bottom of my painting here just because then it looks like the uh, tree is planted in the ground and it's all make-believe anyway since Rudolph only has a head and ears and antlers but it's just some ideas of some things I'll put a little bit more glue for my next row maybe almost two rows there and I'm going to go backwards I'm going to carefully switch my yarn over to the other side and again I'm going to hold it this time probably a little shorter than the first one pull it I'm going to actually pull it fairly tight then I'm going to push down on the folded part and pull my toothpick out do the same thing I have enough glue I think I can just go back the other direction I'm going to move all of this over and get it out of the way pull that out and then right away push it down All right, you can just go up and up and up as tall as you want your tree. And when you get to the top, sometimes it's a little difficult to get that last little fold to go where you want it to. So maybe you just end up with your tree kind of the top of your tree just kind of sticking straight up. Which sometimes if you look at pine trees that's kind of what they do anyway and my finger is starting to get sticky grab my napkin you know the other thing that would be really nice to have at your desk for this would be a wet wipe like a baby wipe or a hand wipe those probably would wipe the glue off pretty well i'm just going to pack my folds down tight so i have a little bit more room to add more And I'm using a really thick yarn here. So if you um, were worried about it not sticking or something, you could even put a little bit more glue over the top of the whole thing. Um, that would be helpful. And then try to trim it. When you trim it, sometimes it pulls some of them up. But then you can. Just go back and fix it a little bit. That was good. I didn't pull too many rows up. All right, I don't have a lot of glue right there, so I'm going to put another dab of glue on top of it and then kind of gently press down so that all sticks. There we go, and I have a nice little triangular shape that looks like a pine tree. Now, of course, if you wanted to get really creative, you could put some tiny, like cut some really teeny, tiny, short pieces of yarn and glue them on top of that or around it in different places to kind of look like you've decorated the tree. Um, 
But for now, I might put some blue sky around my tree. Let's see what's next. Um, in the original one I did, I'll pull that back so we can look at it. I used two colors of blue, kind of a turquoise blue and a royal blue, almost, uh, almost a navy. Um, and I did, I would do a circle around with one and then a circle around with the next color. And I thought that kind of made it look a little bit like a night sky. Um, what I did above Rudolph's antlers, what the reason I did the green, the pink, and then the dark, dark blue was to make it kind of seem like northern lights, the aurora borealis, which is easy to see sometimes in the wintertime. And a lot of times if you see the northern lights, there are flashes of greens and pinks and yellows and stuff. Um, and so that's kind of why I chose those colors there. You could use anything that could, you could do black and dark blue up there to make it look like uh, a night sky. You could you could do a daytime sky if you wanted to, although Rudolph's nose is going to be harder to see during the day. And I see Helen has done a little stem, a brown stem on the bottom of the um, tree. That's good. Her tree is planted. Um, the other thing I thought was kind of fun to do with this was just changing directions and having things go different ways. So, oh, I know what we need to do before we put any night sky in is we need to decide if we want to hang some gemstones from Rudolph's antlers. So let's go back and look at the gemstones I have. I have a pretty gold one and some one that, oh, you know what, this, I could hang this right there and it almost looks like a star on top of my tree. I think I'm going to do that. Do that one first so I don't forget it. The gemstones also have a little bit of adhesive on the back of them so you just peel the paper off and those you can push pretty hard onto your paper because they're not going to um, collapse like the eyes would. Tuck my antler right down next to that. Um, I'm going to do a gold one on the other side. And I just had a thought for his ears. those on first and then we have we can work around them with the when we're filling in the other painting i wonder let's see i have a pink and a purple i wonder if i could fit those heart-shaped ones inside of his ears not that rudolph has pierced ears <laughs> but just to uh, make it look like the inside of his ear is lighter Oh, that kind of fits in there. Uh, we're going to have a glamorous Rudolph here. Another thing that might be nice to add to this painting would be some beads or glitter and or glitter glue would be fun. If you have heart shapes that are the same color, they might look, look better than mine. I have a pink one and a purple one, but they're both kind of the light pink and purple. So it just adds a little bit of shininess to it without getting too, too dark. And there's not a lot of color in it. All right. So before we go any further, I want to talk about some of the space we have left. You can fill your entire space like I did on this one with colors and shapes and, you know, yarn going every which way, whatever. You could also just leave some space wide open. Um, I could do something else. I think 
like a, a great big snowflake on this side and you don't have to put in all of the sky shapes and filling in that I did. I think rather than a darker night sky, I might try this turquoise. Does that kind of look like a sky color next to the tree? It looks like teal kind of. It is kind of, isn't it? I don't really have a sky blue. This one's a little bit darker. Um, let's see what I have in my other pile here. I think that's the same. Well, maybe I can do this kind of greenish blue color. It it it's maybe like a dark cloudy sky, which that happens in the winter time. So uh, I think I'll do that and just do it one color. So it's probably easiest to start closer to Rudolph's head and work towards me. So what I'm gonna do is put some glue in these areas around his ears, down around his head. I think I'm just gonna come down to the bottom of the page that way. So the fun part about this is, is there's no right or wrong. Nobody can tell you that you did the wrong color because it's all imagination anyway. And the other thing is, is you do have a little bit of time before the glue dries. So if you try something and then you're not sure if you like it, you can probably carefully pull it up and try something else. Going around corners and stuff is kind of the hardest. So I wouldn't try worry about being too perfect about filling every bit of space. But also just kind of keep working it along. And it's kind of fun to get it going in and out and around. A little bit less messy than the way I did it the first time with two colors but finding that if you fold it and then kind of push it down then just keep gently pressing it in with your toothpick or your pencil you could go all the way off the edge of the page instead of um, folding it and going back and then when you're all done you could trim trim it all if you wanted um, I kind of like to see that it's a continuous strand of yarn in some places I think I have room to go up in here one more time Then I'll fold that back. Sometimes you really have to push it down and hold it for just a little bit to get it to kind of stick where you want it. You got to be really careful not to, when your fingers get sticky, you don't want to touch the yarn in other places you've put it and accidentally pull it back up. That's kind of frustrating. So just be a little careful and move slowly. And even though I'm still holding the clean end of my toothpick, it feels like my fingers are getting a little sticky with glue. Now this time I don't have to go all the way up into that corner. So I'm going to turn around here and come back down.
kind of like doodling lines. They get a little crazy sometimes. And I think I'm going to have just the perfect amount of yarn to go back up into that little space there and kind of curl it around and fill up the space. Getting that last little tail of your yarn to stay put where you want it is always a little bit of a challenge. But once you get it kind of stuck with some yarn or with some glue, then sometimes you can move it a little bit more and it'll stay stuck to the paper better. And you can always add a little bit more glue and rearrange those other rows you did. Now I'm worried that my finger was sticking there. Didn't want to pull up any of my other yarn. So there, that worked kind of cool. I like it better all one color than I did when I when I did the the first one I tried. So then I just have to decide if I want to use that same color on this side of my tree if I want to use maybe something darker. So this is where if you had a family member or someone who did a lot of uh, knitting or crocheting over the years, it would be a lot of fun to have lots of little scraps of yarn you could use. And you could certainly make a picture like this with um, any subject that you wanted to do. You could do a great big heart for Valentine's Day and put all different kinds of colors in it almost like candy um, beads you could attach beads to it how are we doing this uh, is probably going to take a little bit longer than an hour for you to complete so if you don't finish it you can also always, always just walk away let it dry make sure you close up your um, glue and come back and do more later I still kind of like the idea of a, like a dark blue winter sky and some colors of the Aurora Borealis at the top. Um, so, oh yes, I like that, Helen. Um, I was going to, oh, I was going to show you how I did my snowflake the first time. And if you want to do another snowflake, you can. I cut pretty little pieces. And I cut them, cut three of them that were the same length. So I just held that one up and cut another one. And I did that one more time. Then if you crisscross three pieces, you'll have six. Uh, arms, I guess you could say, on your snowflake. That would be one way to do it. And then you could go back with some really little pieces and do a little V, glue that down. And that would look like a snowflake. I want to use some white. I don't have any white yarn here. Um, I was thinking I could make it look like the ground over here has snow on it. I could put a little bit of snow around the edges of my tree too. Um, so that would be one, one possibility in here. Any other ideas of things we could add to this? We need, we don't want something really detailed, but, um, can you think of anything else? What was that? 
The moon. Oh yeah, you could do a moon or stars. Yeah. Um, if you had little sequins or something, you could stick those on, and those would look like stars. Oh, That'd be great. I, I have to. Well, since I wasn't at one of the surprise things and a couple other, I did the snowman. Thing. Oh, I love the snowman. Does he have a yeah. magnet on the back? Yeah, I put. I just finally put my magnet on mine. I let it dry. Uh, this is a good time we can review something there. Um, did you? Did you? Did I put it in the directions so that you can put a seal coat on him with glue and water, and yeah. or you could use a spray, a clear. It's almost like you can get spray, clear spray paint. Uh, those look work really nice on the model magic. It's uh, like a glaze almost. Or I think you can also use um, like a brush on polyurethane. Uh, those are usually wash with water, so they clean up pretty easily. Uh, I just think that helps kind of protect the model magic. And I can't see exactly what color your scarf is. It's kind of reddish pink. It's red. Red, okay. Yeah. Good. Um, and you should actually have enough model magic to make quite a few little ornaments or something, whether they're snowmen. Um, oh, I have a question. Um, sure. The other magnet in here, um, can we use that? Yes. Uh, so whatever else you want to make um, with your leftover stuff like your model magic and we're not going to use any more of the eyes or um, gemstones or things that were in your little kit so you feel free to use all anything in there um, next week we have one more class where we're going to try to do something with the wooden coasters and i haven't decided exactly what we're going to use to decorate them probably just markers so any of the other things that were in your kit you can either make more of the things that we had the specific lessons on um, or you can make whatever you want did i show did i do the pumpkin one in the you had a picture of it but you okay. didn't do directions okay so the pumpkin is pretty easy it's just make a circle uh, like a ball and kind of flatten it out and i actually used a toothpick to push the lines in to make it kind of look uh rounded and like the ridges on a pumpkin and i used a brown marker to color the um the stuff for the stem and i was really happy with the model magic using white model magic and the washable markers and being able to color the model magic with the markers and they it stayed pretty and i actually mixed it in when i was making it i didn't just color on top of it but i like colored top of it and then kneaded it in and my colors have stayed really nice i didn't even put a, a clear coat on this one yet I think when you put a clear coat on, it will also help your to keep your um, colors won't fade as well. So um, Mod Podge is what a lot of people suggest, but technically Mod Podge is just half glue and half water. So you might as well use your, your glue that you have at home. And I think if you mix your clear school glue with water, you will get a shinier finish on your, mod, on your Model of Magic. And if you use your white glue, it won't be quite so shiny. So that gives you a couple options. So yes, any other questions? Good question. On any of the other classes or any of the other projects? Mm -mm. Okay. Um, so painting with yarn, as you can tell, because I've been working for almost an hour and I've only got about half of my picture done can take a while and this is why we used a smaller piece of paper not a full sheet of construction paper because it just can take a lot of time so it's a, a great project if you have um, leftover pieces of yarn uh, the other thing I think would be kind of cute is if you just did the Rudolph um, and you could also, if you did it on white paper, 
you could draw in with markers or gel pens or something. You could add extra details and things like that. So you could kind of mix and match, make a bunch of st different stuff. Uh, the other thing I was going to mention is with Model Magic. If you have leftover Model Magic or you get more at the store, I'm going to show you a quick little trick here. Um, let's see if I can find two pencils that are about the same size. If you take two pencils about this far apart and take masking tape and, and tape them down to your table so they don't move, and then you take uh, you, an old, um, like a Crayola magic marker, and you kind of flatten out your model magic and you put it in here. And if you roll your magic marker back and forth across the pencils, it rolls all your model magic out to exactly the same thickness all the way down. Then you could use cookie cutters or a little plastic knife to cut out whatever shapes you want. And or um, a not even you don't even have to use a cookie cutter. How about the round um, lid from a canning jar or something? You could use that, and that would make it kind of a circle, which would be similar to like balls that you would hang on a Christmas tree. And so you could cut out different shapes. You could make ornaments and decorate them for your friends and family. And I know they have model magic at the dollar store in little packages like that. I think some dollar stores have a package that's three or four times that size, but it's still pretty inexpensive to work with. If you have other things like Sculpey or other air dry modeling clay, you could certainly use that as well. I, I just like the model magic because it's really light and foamy. So whatever you do is not super heavy. And that's why the magnet on the back of them will hold them up on a refrigerator or something so uh yep so get creative and if you have leftovers uh in things from different projects and you make more projects uh we'd love to see pictures of it and i know miss stephanie at the library would love it if you share a picture of a project that you've done with her and that goes for any of you who are viewing this later in a recording um, you probably find the link and the instruction sheet on the caledonia public library facebook page or you can contact miss stephanie at the library there and uh, this is lisa from the Minnesota Conservatory for the Arts. And I want to thank everybody for joining us. And uh, you can look for one more email next week for the supply list for the last project that we'll be doing next week.